So my name is Ricky Blusenthal. I'm a professor uh, in the Department of Preventive Medicine at the Keck School of Medicine at the University of Southern California. I've been told that there's a rivalry between USC and UCLA. Uh, so I'm happy to be bridging the gap between our two fabulous institutions. Let me first start by thanking uh, Jonathan and Karen Fielding for being here uh, for this event. Uh, so this evening, uh, we have the opportunity to listen to three uh, very knowledgeable uh, investigators and clinicians uh, dealing with this uh, opiate op uh, epidemic. So I want, it's an issue that's near and dear to my heart. I've been studying health issues related to people who use heroin and methamphetamines for almost 25 years now. Uh, so I'm, let me just provide a little context before we'll uh, move on. So there's a, a guy in New York named Sam Friedman, who's a... Uh, uh, sociologist and a longtime HIV researcher in the area of injection drug use. And he's recently called to attention the influence of big events that big events can have on infectious disease spread, right? War, revolution. And there are occasions when we have big events that happen, but because they're not a war or an election associated with it, with it we sort of miss it. And I think the opiate epidemic is a great example of that. Uh, when I think about my own career, I don't know, around, around about two, two, uh, two, 2004, I kind of felt like the, the injection drug use world, with the exception of what was going on with meth, was really shrinking. Uh, so each year as I got older, the participants in my, in my study got older, there were articles written about uh, aging injection drug users, and it's sort of going away. And then all of a sudden, a new cohort began to appear. That's been driven by the sort of opiate prescription drug, uh, epi uh, prescription drug proliferation. And so just a little bit of numbers about that and what makes it, I think, unique is it's a national phenomenon. Uh, one of the things that's been true about earlier drug epidemics is that they've usually been concentrated geographically or in certain subpopulations due in part to dis distribution networks. But one of the things about prescription medications and pharmaceutical companies is they have great breadth. They reach every corner of, the, of our country. There's a, a delivery system in the healthcare system that provides a mechanism for perfectly making them available to people in distal places. Uh, and they also have a marketing system that's in place. Is that the fire alarm? I believe that's the fire alarm. Oh. Yeah, Amber Alert. Okay, anyone have a gold BMW? No. <laughs> uh, any case, so, uh, the, the, um, so when this new medication came along, uh, it was widely available, it was marketed. Uh, Purdue Pharmaceutical and other companies did a very good job of making sure that patients, as well as doctors, were well aware of it. Uh, at the same time, it was a medication that didn't quite deliver as, the, as advertised. So it wasn't as long acting as we supposed in the real world settings. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and it led to some of the problems we're gonna discuss tonight. Um, let me just highlight then a couple of other things. So this distribution network is profound. Um, you know, uh, in 2013, there were between 200 and 250 prescriptions for opiate prescription medications given out. 250, there's 360 million people in the United States. 200 million prescriptions. At last count, there were 2 million people who were dependent on prescription opiate medications. And now we're seeing this add-on uh, transition into heroin use that I see in my studies and that are being documented with numbers doubling and tripling in the last five years. And then, of course, the overdose deaths. So I got into this work uh, because of the HIV epidemic among injection drug users. Uh, and let me tell you that the overdoses are killing as many people as the HIV epidemic used to. So I hope when you listen to the remarks tonight that you bring, to, bring with it a sense of urgency because there really is a, a, a legitimate national crisis related to how these drugs are being misused. And we're going to need very creative responses to that. 